One of my most requested videos on this channel has been a what's on my iPhone video. Now I haven't wanted to do one because it was the same apps that I was using on my iPad and I talk about those apps all the time. But I'm running the iOS 14 beta and well, that makes things interesting. Right now we're limited to what we can do until third party apps can update, so it's gonna look a lot different later this year. I'll do a follow up video then, but right now it's pretty interesting, so I figured I'd show you guys what's going on. I'm gonna put links to everything I mentioned that you could download, including my wallpaper, in the description below. The phone I use is an iPhone 11 Pro Max Space Gray. I slightly wish I would have gone with the midnight green version, but oh well. I also don't use a case on my phone. I've just never really cared for them. Starting with my wallpaper, this is a photo I took in Yosemite of El Cap. I use a bigger version for my iPad wallpaper. I love how this photo turned out, but let's get into the home screen of the device. The biggest new feature is the ability to place widgets almost anywhere on the home screen. Right now, we only have access to widgets from Apple, but third parties will be able to support these. You can also stack widgets on top of each other. Long press on the home screen to get to the jiggle mode and hit the plus button in the top left. Here is where you can add new widgets. In order to stack them, they must be the same size. There are three different sizes. The bigger the widget, the more info it can display. To stack a widget, just drag it and drop it on top of another similar sized one. You can now swipe through the different widgets to see what's in the stack. My first set of widgets is information I would like to see throughout my day. This includes weather, calendar, fitness, and battery. On the stack, you can long press on it and hit the edit stack button. Here you can turn on and off the smart feature. I really like the smart stack feature. It'll learn what I wanna see at a given point and show me that widget. It won't just show the top one and then I gotta swipe through the rest. But you can turn this off if you don't like it. My second group of widgets is based on automations. This is a stack of shortcut widgets. The shortcuts widget takes advantage of the new folders feature. To pick what is displayed, you long press on the widget and hit edit shortcut. From here, you can pick a folder to display its shortcuts. I have my folders broken up into categories and color coded. So I know blue is all task management, cyan is drafts, green is audio, music, and podcasts, Yellow is photos. Orange controls stuff in my house like lights, TV, and home pods. Red is utilities. And purple is stuff I use throughout my day. I can flip through these fast and know where I am based on the color. The smart feature has also been doing a great job at guessing which category I want. When you run a shortcut now, any menu or list will appear in a notification, and you can make selections from there. The ask for input action will now run in this view as well. It no longer needs to open the shortcuts app. It makes shortcuts like adding things to a task manager or calendar really fast and simple to do. I am so happy with the new widget style. The core use of my iPhone is to capture data, so I don't keep a ton of apps on here. I use these shortcuts to quickly capture information throughout my day. When back at my iPad, this is when I'll act on that data. You can still swipe over and add the old widgets along with the new ones. I'm kind of surprised this is still here to be honest, but I'm all in on the new stuff and I love having them on the home screen. So I'm leaving this section blank for now. Maybe this will make more sense when third party apps get updated. I could put widgets here that I would like to check in on, but I don't need right in my face when I unlock my phone. In the dock, I just have three apps. The first is Things. This is my task manager of choice. I really love this app and use it to manage my life and business. Next is Drafts. 90% of all my text goes here. On my phone, I use it to take quick notes, jot ideas down, draft emails, and more. Finally is Messages. I probably don't need to explain this one, but I send a lot of messages throughout the day. You may have noticed I only have one home screen, no dots at the bottom to swipe between. In iOS 14, you could turn off additional home screens, long press to go into jiggle mode, then tap on the page indicator at the bottom. You can tap the check marks under each screen to turn them on or off. This way you could have a work home screen, a home home screen, a vacation home screen, and so on. It would be even cooler if you could automate turning these on and off with shortcuts. 
I personally just like having one screen with all my information. I think it looks clean. If I need to pull up an app, I could swipe down and search for it. But there's also the new app library. Here is where all the apps installed on your device live now. There are two dynamic folders up top. One is suggested apps and the other one is recently installed apps. The apps themselves are organized based on categories they're in on the app store. I don't like this. I wish we could manually organize them. Some apps like the app I use to tune my guitar are just in the wrong category. I wouldn't define tuning a guitar as entertainment. To me, that's utility. Also, every banking app seems to think it's a productivity app for some reason. There is a great search option in the app library. When in the search mode, it will display all of your apps alphabetically. As an experiment, I very recently decided to delete Twitter and all other social media apps off my phone and my 12.9 inch iPad Pro. If somebody needs to get a hold of me, they can message me or call me still. So far, I'm liking it, but I also know this is an extreme. But my phone was becoming a distraction instead of a useful tool. My primary goal is to keep making videos, and I can't do that if I'm spending all day on Twitter. So now when I have those moments where I need to kill time, instead of opening Twitter, I'll work on a shortcut or write out some ideas for a video. I have all those apps on a spare iPad anyways, so I can still check in on those places and mess around when I'm not working. While I may not be keeping social media apps on my phone, there are a few other notable apps I would like to mention. Halite is my go-to camera app. What's great about it is it can shoot raw photos. This means when it comes time to edit, you have more control over the image compared to something like JPEG, but they do take up more space. You also have control over options like ISO and shutter speed. I use Filmic Pro for shooting videos. Just like with Halide, you have more control over what you're shooting. You can manually set exposure, white balance, and even shoot in a log profile. I pretty much just use this app for filming clips that will be in YouTube videos. I'll use the stock camera app for normal everyday things. Agenda is a really interesting app that I've used for a lot of different purposes. It's really meant to be this place where you can write notes, but schedule them and even see reminders. But I've been using it for research. I can make outlines for scripts and break everything up into text blocks. I can also use Markdown to store links and make them look clean. But the feature that set it over the top for me was the ability to put images and files right into the notes. Goodlinks is a new read it later app. Probably no surprise to this one, but I've been storing articles I can read later in it. It's a good, clean, native app. I save a lot of articles from indie blogs and tech sites here to go back and read. Cheap Charts tracks when movies and TV shows go on sale on iTunes. Every night around 8, I get a push notification telling me what is on sale. I sometimes find stuff I've been wanting to watch, but I often find things I had forgotten about or stuff that I would like. It's a great way to save a bit of money, but still watch a bunch of movies. Mixamum is a great way to create smart playlists for music on the iPhone. I still can't believe we don't have this feature on iOS or iPadOS. You can use a lot of the same logic the music app uses on the Mac to build smart playlists and even assign playlist art to it. Deliveries is a must-have app. You can add any tracking info to it and it'll show you where your package is and when it's supposed to arrive. This is great for keeping all this info in one place. Guitar Tuna is an app I've been using to quickly tune a guitar. I'm sure it's not as accurate as a physical guitar tuner, but once I get the guitar tuned, it sounds fine for my needs. If you're new to playing the guitar, there's even a section that will teach you different chords. One last tip. In iOS 14, you can go into settings, home screens, and set apps to install automatically to the app library instead of the home screen. This I really like. You can also turn off badges for the app library as well. I only use badges on three apps and those are the ones in my dock. So that's it guys, that's my home screen. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna also link to where you can install the public beta if you want on your phone or iPad, but word of caution, it is a beta, so that means bugs, stuff can go missing, stuff can crash. I wouldn't put this on a phone or a device you really rely on every single day. If you got like a spare phone or your kid's phone, 
Like I also mentioned, I'll do a follow-up video when third-party apps are supporting the new widgets. Uh, thank you guys all for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, have a great day.